Hello there! We meet again in our final episode of Syllabus 2.2, that is to describe the structure of the lysosome. Here you can see a picture of the cell. The lysosome is not this large circle. This circle is the nucleus, where you can see the nucleolus in the nucleoplasm. Outside here, you can see the cisternae of the Golgi apparatus. And if you notice, at the tips of the cisternae, you can find these tiny blue circles, which is the organelle of discussion today, that is the lysosome. So come, join me in BioWorld to explore about the lysosome. But first, let me share with you an interesting fact about plants. You see, they do not have lysosome. The reason is because lysosomes are necessary for digestion. And since plants carry out photosynthesis, they do not need to do digestion, thus the absence of lysosomes. However, there are some plants that are what we call as carnivorous plants or insectivorous plants that do carry out digestion but they don't digest using the lysosome. These are the carnivorous plants. The pitcher plant, the Venus flytrap and the Rafflesia trap and digest insects using the central vacuole. The central vacuole of the plant cells will contain hydrolytic enzymes that function like the lysosome to digest the insects. Now let's get to know the structure of the lysosome. It is spherical and inside it will contain enzymes. The enzymes are hydrolytic enzymes that carry out hydrolysis. So they are also known as hydrolase or lysozymes. The organelle is very special in that Although it is only made up of a single membrane, that membrane is special in that it can withstand digestion by the hydrolytic enzymes, meaning that these enzymes cannot digest the membrane of the lysosome. Besides that, the membrane is also impermeable to the enzyme, meaning that the enzymes inside the lysosome cannot escape to the cytoplasm. There are two types of lysosomes. Most of the time, the cells will contain primary lysosomes. Primary lysosomes have inactive hydrolytic enzymes, which we can call as proenzymes or zymogenes. But when the cell is functioning, then the primary lysosomes convert into the secondary lysosome. The secondary lysosomes have active hydrolytic enzymes. Now, under what circumstance does the primary lysosome convert into a secondary lysosome? That happens in two situations. One, when the cell starts to become acidic. This occurs when the cells become old. The second situation in which the primary lysosome converts into a secondary lysosome is when the lysosome attaches to a vacuum. So let me explain when these events actually happen. Let us begin with the role of lysosome in immunity. When a bacteria enters the system, the white blood cell will detect its presence and carry out phagocytosis. Once the bacteria is ingested by the white blood cell, the bacteria will be trapped in a food vacuum, also known as a phagosome. Then, the primary lysosome will attach itself to the phagosome. This will stimulate the primary lysosome to convert into a secondary lysosome. Following this, the membrane of the vacuole will fuse with the membrane of the lysosome. 
and the hydrolytic enzymes inside the lysosome will begin to move into the vacuole. The enzymes then will digest the bacteria and in this way destroy it. So what is left now will be waste material inside the vacuole. Now that we've seen the role of lysosome in phagocytosis, let's discuss the role of lysosome in autophagocytosis. Autophagocytosis is a process in which cells remove old and aged organelles. For example, let's say this mitochondria is not functioning efficiently. So it has to be removed so that there is space for new mitochondria to form. To do that, some of the cisternae from the smooth endoplasmic reticulum will begin to encircle the aged organelle. In this way, an autophagosome will form. Then, a primary lysosome will attach itself to the autophagosome and this will stimulate the primary lysosome to convert into a secondary lysosome. This then will cause the membranes of the autophagosome and the lysosome to fuse. And now, the hydrolytic enzymes from the lysosome can diffuse into the autophagosome. The enzymes then will begin to digest the organelle so that in the end, a vacuole with waste material is produced. Digestion by lysosome during phagocytosis as well as autophagocytosis produces waste vacuoles. The waste within the vacuole can become toxic if they remain within the cell. So what happens is these vacuoles will move towards the plasma membrane and fuse with the membrane to carry out exocytosis. This way, the waste material will exit the cell. Some lysosomes will also carry out exocytosis. This is so that the hydrolytic enzymes within the lysosome can be released out of the cell. Let's look at the final role of lysosome in metamorphosis. Metamorphosis occurs in the development of a frog. You can see the young tadpole has a tail. But due to metamorphosis, the adult frog does not have a tail. During metamorphosis, lysosomes are involved in autolysis. Autolysis is a process where the cells in the tail of the frog will automatically lyse. Originally, the cells in the tail of the frog contain primary lysosomes. But for metamorphosis to occur, the cells start to become acidic. When the cells become acidic, the primary lysosome transforms into a secondary lysosome. In an acidic environment, the secondary lysosome's membrane becomes permeable. So, the hydrolytic enzymes begin to diffuse into the cell cytoplasm. So, as the enzymes diffuse out, they begin to break down the molecules in the cell, thus destroying the cell. Autolysis occurs. So, now that we know the role of lysosome, we have come to the end of this subtopic. Bye-bye.